Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Thank you for calling XYZ Company. Please press 1 for English. Please press 2 for our sales staff. And then please listen to 20 minutes of elevator music until you get so mad you hang up. Thank you for calling XYZ Company. That's exactly what's happening with all these stupid press one, two, twenty seven, thirty three. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith and God bless America. Followed by a real live patriot to call in with our Pledge of Allegiance. Be proud. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you and yours. Hello, hello, I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch. And, of course, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a great big, big, big spring tire sale. Stop in and see them today. Along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have a real patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. You're the man. Yes, I thought I'd do this pledge this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, Wheels. And right now we're going to go to the weather forecast brought to everybody by K&R Rental. Hello, Roger over there. The whole crew gets there early in the morning to better serve you. At 256 South 600 West of Hayburn, right there on the Burley Paul Highway. You're driving by. You're going to know it's them. I mean, they've got all kinds of equipment in their front yard. The best tools and equipment to finish any and all construction projects or any project you've got, you check it out. Not sure what you need? Well, that's easy. Call them. Ask. 678-3122. K&R Rental. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Rain showers for a couple of days, but hopefully by the weekend we'll see some sunshine. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting scattered rain showers off and on throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 52. Winds out of the west-southwest at about 14 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30 miles an hour. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Tomorrow, we do have another chance of some rain showers off and on throughout the day. Expecting some thunderstorms possible by the afternoon as well. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 51. Winds out of the west at about 17 miles an hour, as high as 30 miles an hour for tomorrow night, 30% chance of showers, and expecting a low of around 33, so that could equate to some snow showers up in the higher elevations. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies, high of 53. Sunday, sunny and 58. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Gina, and brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. I told you they're right on the Burley Paul Highway, and now with all the thinking spring activities and jobs you've got set up, you get a hold of K&R Rental today. Number to call, 678-3122. Hey, I'll tell you what, Merv May, come on in here, would you please? All right. Hey, good set of steer cams there here to get all our turn. 31 moment, I am 31 going to 32. Oh, that's the chant of the world's best dog gone auctioneer, Merv May, over at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale time today at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. today at the sale that works for you. Merv May, Cade, Roggy, Lance, Judy, the whole crew. And by the way, 
Number to call for cattle consignments is six seven eight nine four one one. Right now, let's take a look at the partial list of cattle going through the ring today. Lynn Higley over at Malad bringing in twenty head of good calves, and then we've got uh, Keegan Merrill and Logan bringing in twenty five head of light calves. Lincoln Driscoll up at Aberdeen know the family; they're big and spuds. Eight hundred head of uh, eighty head. Wait a minute, eighty head. Pardon me, not eight hundred. We'd be selling all night. 80 head of 600 pound calves and Paul Firth over to Paul bringing in 15 to 20 head of calves butcher cows from Antelope Hills Dairy Acme Dairy and Funk Dairy and Merv told me yesterday they're going to start selling at 10.30 this morning at the sale that works for you the Burley Livestock Sale Yard 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley 678-9411 Merv come on in and sell those calves alright get set of steer calves there here to get all their 31 moment of hand 31 one going to and 32, two and a half, three and a half, I have 134, four and a half, and five and a half, and a half, 135, 50, 135, and a half, selling dollar 35. Zeb Bell gets bottom again. Ah, uh, thank you, Merv. Thank you. Great sale again today. And we also want to remind everybody about all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs from Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to have a visit from those folks a little bit later on today. Looking forward to having them over here. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number is 6780459. And they open up early in the morning at 730 to better serve you, like I said, with all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs as they have for over six decades. Wow. Great folks, knowledgeable people serving you. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. The menu for the Senior Senator on South Overland Avenue in Burley, Idaho, is sweet and sour chicken, uh, mixed vegetables, uh, salad, and cake. It's only five bucks for all you can eat. You never go away hungry. Absolutely. Okay, you, you didn't do your duty. You just said cake. What kind of cake? Oh, uh, let's have chocolate. You got it, buddy. With ripply, creamy, piled high, chocolate, fudge, frosting. Oh, my. Joe willed it. It's going to be so. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Take care of yourself. Joe Taylor talking about the uh, senior center right there on Overland and great eats over there at noontime. All right, calls are welcome. 436 2244 927 4587. I have a pet story, and I say pet story because I mentioned to you yesterday that I am absolutely going to spend some time on this this morning. I'm infuriated. I'm frustrated. And simply put, I'm very mad about this story, and I want to have you respond to it. But in the interim, before we get started, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Oh, call them and make an appointment. They can help you get back to being you. Number to call is 678-1191. That number again, 678-1191. Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists. I mean, they have a team. A team of experts there that really know exercise and they can help you get back to being you. That number again, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Really good people. This story came to me a couple of days ago. And it absolutely solidifies to me the attack on Christianity in this country, the diminishment of the value of Christianity in this country by the Democratic Party. And when I read this and heard this story, I was outraged, and I think you will be too. A Republican Pennsylvania state representative by the name of Stephanie Borowitz was asked to give the opening prayer at the Repub- or at the Pennsylvania state legislature. She got up and of course mentioned Jesus and thanked Jesus 
and thanked and asked him to heal this country and help guidance with our President Trump. All of a sudden, all heck broke loose in the chambers because that was the same day that Democratic Pennsylvania State Representative Movita Johnson Harrell, the first female Muslim representative in the state legislature, said that the prayer given by Stephanie Borowitz was offensive, and she cried the blues about the mentioning of Jesus. And then, the entirety of the state Democratic leadership stood up behind this Muslim, Representative Movita Johnson Harrell, and denounced the Republican Stephanie Borowitz for her prayer. They said that the invocation was offensive. I got to hold my tongue here. I am so outraged over this. Then listen to what happened. An Islamic prayer called the Takbir was recited before the legislative session started and the swearing in ceremony for this Muslim woman. And House Minority Leader Frank Dermody denounced the Christian prayer as saying that that prayer was beneath the dignity of the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania. But it went further. It went further. Then, after hearing about this, Democratic Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf also denounced and decried against the Christian prayer and then, hold on, caller, just a minute. Then the state legislature applauded the Muslim Democratic Pennsylvania representative Jason Dawkins Tuesday, the next day's invocation, in which he recited from the Koran. What is happening here in America? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. You know, I'm sick and tired of these um, infiltrators into our government. What the hell is the matter with with the, the, the government right now? Um, this is the United States of America. We do uh, uh, believe in God. We, we pray. We honor the flag. What are these people think they're... Well, they know what they're doing. Donna, it's a concentrated effort. I've said this on my program for years, and you know I have. I have said for a long time that Islam is going to wedge their way under the door. Islam is going to wedge their way through the keyhole. Islam is going to try to take over our government, and they're doing so. When the Muslim Brotherhood was involved with the Obama administration, I questioned it. You know, Donna, that I even had Mike Simpson on our program, and he called me a McCarthyist because I was worried about the involvement of the Muslims in the Obama administration. It's getting worse every day. We we all should be worried. Uh, what the heck is the matter with the Republican Party? No guts. And, you know, we the people, my word, um, you know, being sworn into to their offices on the Koran instead of the Bible. Um, oh, I, I don't know. I'm I'm really upset. I mean, this is ridiculous. This has got to stop. Yeah, but the, the, the part that made me the maddest... The maddest was that the denunciation of Jesus Christ and Christianity and the embarrassment of saying Jesus' name and the Pennsylvania uh, Democrats absolutely, why that's terrible, why we have to have this stopped, it's beneath the dignity of this house, and then coming out and applauding, applauding the Muslims, are you kidding me? Yeah, let's send them all back over where they belong. I couldn't agree more. I'm I'm not going to weaken on this. And Donna, God bless you for calling and speaking out. Thank you so much. Yep. 
Have a good day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. I promise. I, I've got to get this in. I want to remind everybody about Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland and Burley. Oh, America's Diner. Absolutely great, great menu choices. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, anytime, all the time. And people make the difference at Denny's. They've got a great staff that's serving you, and they look forward to having you come on in. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch, and a Another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Danny's Restaurant, you better believe it, America's Diner. Stand by, caller. I'm a-coming, I'm a-coming, I promise. But I also want to remind everybody about our friends over at Rain for Rent. I tell you what, Jake and the crew, they are busy at 134 South 600 West of Paul. Number to call, catch them, talk to them, find out what you need. They'll help you is 438-5065. They're a ranking diamond dealer and they've got a dedicated knowledgeable very knowledgeable sales and service staff ready to work for you irrigation time right now in the magic valley and that means you better get a hold of rain for rent 438-5065 and they're open eight to five rain for rent caller good morning you're on the air they hung up, sir. Oh, that's unfortunate. they got to give me a little time to get my work done, and then I'll go with them. This story is so offensive to me because it's indicative of what's happening not just in the Pennsylvania legislature. It's happening all over the United States. It is. And when this woman... The Republican representative, Stephanie Borowitz, was asked to give the prayer. And she said, uh, basically, some of the quotes were that uh, she absolutely was asking Jesus to praise this country, heal this country, and uh, declared that at the name of Jesus, every name, every person will bow. Amen. She had a right to her prayer. She had a right to promote in this Judeo-Christian country, at least it was, a Christian prayer. But for the Democratic Party, and they did this at their convention a couple of years ago, for the Democratic Party to come out and denounce her, condemn her, and say that it absolutely was uh, a prayer that was beneath the dignity of this house in Pennsylvania, Oh, my goodness. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. They hung up again. I don't know why, but... Well, it sounds to me like somebody's trying to disrupt the program instead of being a part of the program. So uh, keep answering, but uh, evidently on spring break, we've got some juvenile that has the IQ of a hockey puck that wants to play games. All right, I definitely All right, thank you. Keep on my board. I want to uh, have you respond to this because it's coming to a community near you. It's coming to a political venue near you. And the part that is so upsetting about this is that the Democratic Pennsylvania governor Tom Wolf also denounced the Christian prayer and then afterwards When a Muslim prayer was given in the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania, it was recited from the Koran and nothing, nada, nothing negative was said at all. What is happening to this country? God help us. Jesus help us. Your thoughts, please. 436-2244-1-866-927-4444. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. If you don't speak out, and you don't speak up, this is what's going to happen. I want to remind you about Ark Animal Hospital, seven fifty Twenty First Street, near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. Six seven eight one one seven seven. The number to call, and they are absolutely committed to the health. 
the health of your pets and livestock. Please, Dr. Bill and the rest of the crew, they really put a lot of time and effort into serving you and your animals, and don't forget to give them a call, 6781177. And it's so true, they've got the warm hearts for the cold noses, serving your healthy animals. And they want to keep them that way. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn. Yep, that's right. Warm hearts for the cold noses. I'm surprised more people aren't outraged over that. I really am surprised. And on stories like this, I think of all the, oh, well, they've got a right to have their prayer. Do they really? They're a minority religion, if you want to call it that. And I absolutely uh, adhere to the fact that the majority rules. The majority rules. And if a Christian prayer is given at the Pennsylvania State House of Representatives, don't chide it. Don't tear it apart. Don't denounce it. And if a Muslim prayer is given in accordance with some of the people, very few, one, one, in their House of Representatives, I would not be that unprofessional or that unkind. I wouldn't say or do a thing. I'd just sit there. Probably I'd get up and walk out because I will not allow my thoughts to be covered by the Koran or anything to do with their religion. But I would not speak out. But yet the governor, the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania true to form, as the Democratic Party denounces God, they spoke out against it, but yet they stood up for the Koran. If this doesn't scare you, I'm just going to be blunt and say something's wrong with you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, I am so sick and so tired of what my country has become. It's just all over. It, it's not only this deliberate slam against Christians. It's that they, our national legislature is spending so much time trying to get rid of the president. It's just I cannot believe I, they don't have any dignity. Well, it's not just dignity. It's a lack of responsibility in serving you and me and everybody else that are constituents. I absolutely I want I want to get a hold of Adam Schiff. I want to grab the short end of the necktie and I want to pull it tight until he looks like a human thermometer and look him straight in the eye and ask him what in the dickens has he done to serve his constituents and honor the seat that he has in the House of Representatives. Just tell Tell me for the last two years what that income poop has done. Mm, good question. I'm sure his voting record is out there for all to see. Right now, Linda, he is testifying in front of a committee that is after his job. Quite frankly, they want him to step down from his position on committees, and a lot of people want him to step out of Congress all the way because of what he has done over the last two years of lying and literally blaspheming the president and this administration with no facts to back it up. I watched a little bit of it this morning, and this bug-eyed congressman knows that they're after him, and he's going to lie, cheat, and steal, and say anything he can to try to retain his post. But it's it's people like him that need to be drilled out of the house immediately. I quite agree. And then their governor, I would ask, uh, yuck, what have they got over there? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. But they sure think there's something. Gavin Newsom That's is... All they have time to do. I agree. I wonder. Yeah. What else they're doing? Hey, listen. I knew. You, I just had a feeling that you would call because uh, you're a good Christian lady, and I thank you for your call this morning. God bless you. Thanks. God bless you too. Thank we you. We need to pray for our country, but then we need to act on who we vote for. Amen. Thank you, Linda. 
Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I, I just don't know why in this country, and it's even here in Magic Valley, it is. You know that. You read some of the, uh, I think, absolutely uh, uh, nitwitty op-eds in the paper. There is a caving and a capitulation to Islam and Muslims. This story right here is a perfect example of capitulation and rolling over and condemning Christianity in favor of trying to keep good favor with Islam. Why? Why? And then I took a lot of heat over the last couple of weeks from certain churches and pastors that didn't like me pointing the finger at them for not doing their job in the pulpit. This reinvigorates me to point my finger at them again because they're not doing their job from the pulpit. No, they are not. The Muslim encroachment in this country is becoming very dangerous. And they should be up in the pulpit absolutely denouncing what's going on and praising and not hiding from the word of Jesus. Let me know what your pastors are saying. Let me know what their sermons are. Because there's a lot of societal ills that they need to be preaching on to get all of us to try to make it better. No, they are not doing their job. Not all of them, of course. But unfortunately, too many of them. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'll stand behind that. And also, I will say this. That any time, any pastor from any denomination wants to come on this program, they are more than welcome. More than welcome. I've said it many, many, many times. And I've given my number, 312-2976. So far, crickets. Nothing. They're welcome to come on this program and discuss these issues. It's high time they did. Stop being cowards. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and the Napa location. They are looking for more people. They're looking for technicians, and they want to have people that want great, great job opportunities and know how to work with their hands. Absolutely. And don't forget, too, they've got the best of retail equipment sales and equipment rentals, especially with the Bobcats. Man, they've got Bobcats all over the yard. And if you're not sure how to run one for the particular job you need, they've got a big sandbox out behind, and they will teach you. Excellent people excellent business berry equipment and rental in burley twin falls and napa you get a hold of them today have you noticed since we started this conversation nothing no calls why is it that we're afraid to speak out on these issues why is it that whether you're a Lutheran, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Baptist, it doesn't make any difference what religion you are? It doesn't. That you're not being fed information about how to become better Christians in your community, better leaders in your community. Nobody is speaking out about the societal ills that are killing this country. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, well try to put this in right, the right words, but uh, growing up as, as a kid in Rupert, um, I would go to a lumber yard there and get scraps of wood and build stuff out of it, and there was a fellow there by the name of Nellie Ryan happiest person you could ever be around and time went on and and I've, I've grown to 
who I am today. And Nellie was always so cheerful and, and offered a hand. And, and then come to find out, maybe just in the last, five years that he made that uh, the Pan Death March in the Philippines and faith made this country and got us through World War II the burials at sea the men we lost and and to see what's happening happening today is just bloody wrong absolutely i i just wish more people felt like you and me and others that we can see that our system of morality and our system of values and our system of right and wrong has been thrown in the garbage can and our worshiping and thanking the good lord above is now denounced and it's called Beneath the Dignity of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Earl, I can see Jesus in my mind's eye, and there are tears flowing this morning. We can't vary our history. We live, we live with it and, and, and go uphill with it. We, we don't go downhill on history. We go uphill. Yep. I couldn't agree more. And uh, your story about that gentleman is indicative of many, many stories of severe hardships that were endured because they had faith. Well, I, I, I grew up around them and, and gained from them and made my own mistakes, too. But it, and and the more I look back at it, the more I appreciate where we've come from. Yep, so. Earl, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your friendship and your calling in this morning, and I mean that sincerely. God bless you for your call. Thank you. Yeah, but I try to do my best. All right, my friend. I, sometimes I'm hard to understand, but no, 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 no. Your point was very poignant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Earl. God bless you. Calls welcome, and caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm going to ask you straight out. You're a good friend, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not immune to criticism. Do you think I'm wrong on what I said this morning? Well, I was busy with customers, so I didn't get to listen to a lot of it. But the gist I'm getting is that they want. Muslim, the Muslim, or the gal that gave that prayer, and then the Muslim was upset, and the Democrats jumped in on her ship, right? The whole story is one of the denouncing and belittling of a Christian prayer, and the Democrats, including all the way to the top in the state of Pennsylvania with the governor, Tom Wolf, decrying the prayer and then advocating and backing the Muslim prayer with the Koran. Yeah, that's that's called not a backbone, and I do not want to be in their shoes when they meet God. Because God says, you turn your back on me, I turn my back on you. Exactly. And what it is, it's my opinion, it is they are wanting this nation to be a Muslim nation. They are not coming over here to assimilate to be Americans like the other immigrants did. That Absolutely. Did they come over here to become Americans, to make a better life for themselves and make a better America. And they fought and died in World War II. Thank God we do not have a World War II coming today because there would not be very many patriots in I, this younger generation that would stand up and do what... I agree, and I want to just say this quickly so I don't lose that other call, but I want to say this. Anybody, anybody that comes to this United States of America... It is my, not my job to throw open the doors and say, oh, here, we'll help you do this to assimilate, we'll help you do that to assimilate, we'll do everything. We will encourage their neighborly, neighborly attitude, but it is their job. It is their job to assimilate, 
It is their job to learn our language, our customs, and what we do in this country and not break off and have their separate little entities that are going to be a fragmentation of our value system. I stand behind what I said. Well, I'll stand right beside you. And one thing the Democratic Party has done, they have went full-blown against America. The party of John F. Kennedy of ask what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you, Amen. is gone. Yep. Amen. It is gone. We need to get that mentality back. Do what's good for the country, and we will be, rise up and be a great nation again. If we do not get that thinking back, we are a sinking ship. And, you know, I'm just going to say this. Uh, I hate to think of this great country as the Titanic. We've hit the iceberg. We've hit the liberal sleaze iceberg that has ripped open a huge hull in America's thought pattern and its value system. And I'll go toe-to-toe with anybody. We're sinking. Yes, exactly. Exactly it, Zeb. I know you got to run, Doug. Take that call, but I appreciate your call. Thank you very much. Let's do what we can for our senior senators. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, caller, I'm going to ask you to stay there just for 30 seconds. I'll be right there, I promise. I want to remind everybody about the Bennett Boys auction coming up this Saturday at 11 o'clock over in Filer. It's the Kelvin and Fern Crawford auction. It's in Filer at 4200 North, 2400 East, and they're going to have all kinds of antiques. You like antiques? Wow. They've got a lot lot of them antiques and collectibles and they've got furniture and shop equipment everything at the calvin and fern crawford auction this saturday at 11 o'clock march 30th in filer look for the signs bennett boys auction service no sale too big no sale too small the bennett boys yes sir they sell them all caller good morning you're on the air well Zeb, ever since the supreme court decision in 1962 and 63 to uh, take prayer and Bible reading out of our public schools. We've been on a downward uh, trend ever since. And it's just, and you know, the Supreme Court, up until that decision, emphatically, that was their word, we were a Christian nation. Now you can't teach Christian nations in our school, but you can teach, teach the five pillars of Islam, and that's okay. Or you can have Islam prayer rugs and so forth in the schools or foot baths or whatever they use. And so, uh, you know, my ancestor, my, my grandfather came over here in 1903. He, he didn't speak any English. He was German. And he, uh, it, it took him a while to uh, become a citizen. But he had a sponsor and uh, came into Iowa, became a farmer and and so forth but now today like you say the previous caller these people aren't wanting to come in here to assimilate they're they're coming in here to get on the welfare train and uh to, they don't want to they want to bring in their sharia law well wait a minute 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 adrian I, I, instead of rambling on this i want to ask interject some things with you uh even locally in twin falls and i know that you've talked about this and we visited about it and you've written letters about it to the editor this diversity campaign is actually a fragmentation campaign if people are going to come here accept our values accept our community accept our way of doing things fragmentation is caused by diversity and when you have diversity fragmentation you've lost your sense of community and you're never going to be progressive in good thought after that oh absolutely and so you know we have to realize islam is a theocracy to control and conquer the world it has been from its inception uh, muhammad himself bragged about the number of jews that he uh, personally beheaded it was in the hundreds i mean it's not a religion of peace and brotherhood it's a religion of hate and murder that's what it's about well all i'm going to say i've got to get a weather forecast wait a minute adrian please i've got a weather forecast i want to do and i want to sum this up that if we have a legislative session in pennsylvania 
And they have asked this Christian woman to give a prayer, and she gives the prayer, and then she is denounced. And then the leaders of the House and all the way up to the mayor, or pardon me, the uh, governor of the state of Pennsylvania, denounce her and absolutely decry the fact that it was a Christian prayer. We've got problems that are almost insurmountable. No doubt about it, Zeb. Absolutely. I mean, in, in all of us that are Christians, we've got to do more work than inside the four walls of our church. We've got to get out. We've got to be active. We've got to write the letters. We've got to get hold of our congressmen and senators. We need to not demand that they uphold our U.S. Constitution and give us these rights that we need to bring back the greatness of this constitutional republic. I agree. I agree. And we need a Supreme Court decision to to bring back prayer and Bible reading back into our public schools. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate it very much. I've got to run to the weather. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Weather forecast brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And you know where they are. They're right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. Easy to find, easy to talk to, and quite frankly, if you're having any diminishment of your hearing, it could be according to many, many problems. Maybe you're way over weight. Obesity plays into that. Or maybe you've got a heart problem or high blood pressure. There are many, many things that need to be checked out, and they have excellent people, Dr. Christine Pickup, Dr. Courtney Mitchell, and Dr. Shane Hunsaker, serving you at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. We'll tell you more right after the weather. Rain showers for a couple of days, but hopefully by the weekend we'll see some sunshine. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting scattered rain showers off and on throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 52. Winds out of the west-southwest at about 14 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30 miles an hour. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Tomorrow, we do have another chance of some rain showers off and on throughout the day. Expecting some thunderstorms possible by the afternoon as well. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 51. Winds out of the west at about 17 miles an hour, as high as 30 miles an hour for tomorrow night, 30% chance of showers, and expecting a low of around 33, so that could equate to some snow showers up in the higher elevations. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies, high at 53. Sunday, sunny and 58. That's your weather for Zebeth Ram. Thank you, Gina. Always a good job, and brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Again, behind the Minnetonka Hospital, across from the emergency room, here's the number to call for a hearing screening test. I urge you to do it today, 312-0957. There are those that are like little gutless worms, and they are, And I'm calling it like I see it this morning. If you're offended by that, then I guess it's your problem, not mine. I'm not going to worry about it. That will wait till after the program, or they will call me at night, late at night, and uh, yell, scream, stomp, and holler at my opinions on the radio that they don't agree with. I have said so long until I'm blue in the face, wait a minute. If you've got the backbone, you know who I am. I don't know who you are, but if you got the backbone to call with an opinion, do it on the radio, and we'll talk about it. But no, they can't do that. They would rather call and bother my wife and myself and condemn and damn and use foul language after the program's over. They're gutless people, and I give no credence to them whatsoever. None. None. These are issues that need to be discussed. You can't run away from these. And I'm really concerned about a lack of response by our ministerial positions in this area. I've rolled out the red carpet for them, excuse me, to call and be a part of my program. Maybe be a part of my program on a weekly basis. But nothing. Nothing. And therefore, I will continue to criticize the leaders of the churches for what I think they're not doing their job. 
There, I want to put a date on your calendar that is extremely important to me because this man is a dear friend, and I want to help him any way we can. Uh, put down on your calendar right now, if you're at your desk or at your office, whatever the case might be, April 20th. April 20th at the Rupert Senior Center in Rupert. There's going to be a benefit dinner for J.R. Strunk. And uh, J.R. has helped so many people, so many people over the years, and now it's time to help J.R. He's fighting a battle, and I hope he knocks it out in the second round. He's fighting a battle with cancer, and we certainly want to wish him the best. They're going to have a dinner. They're going to have raffles. They're going to have everything, and I urge you, I urge urge you to put that date down on your calendar. We're not going to say a whole bunch more about it now, but we want you to remember April 20th. And uh, for more information, call my dear friend George Mass and uh, also Les Wilson. I'd give you the numbers right now, but uh, we're going to hit this a lot more in the future. That's going to be on April 20th. Benefit dinner for J.R. Strunk. Please, let's pay him back for all the good things that he's done for us. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. In keeping with the vein of what we're talking about this morning, and i tell you what, this is so frustrating to me. Muslim Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib submitted an impeachment legislation to impeach President Trump. Oh, she's so proud. I'm going to lead the charge to impeach President Trump. Well, okay, bright girl. Answer this question. Please, take the time. None of the news media smart enough or have guts enough to ask. Oh, you've submitted impeachment charges and forms against the president. On what? provable grounds and then you hear crickets did it did it did it nothing and i've had it this has not served the united states of america the adam shifts the swalwells the uh, rashida talibs any and all of these people are doing nothing nothing but going out into a feedlot and they're just raking up you-know-what. Nothing's being accomplished. Nothing's being served or provided to the American public for what they're supposed to do by we electing them to an office. She's so proud. She was the filthy mouth woman that used vulgarity, real vulgarity, against our President Trump Said she was going to get him. And then added some other words to it. If people in the audience think I'm going to back off on this, good heavens, you have got on the wrong train. You better get off at the next stop. I'm not going to weaken on this. These things need to be addressed, whether it's locally or nationally. It all amounts to the same. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, how you doing? I'm mad. Why? Well, say this is Ray Bagby. Yes, sir. I say good morning. And I, a little humorous, uh, so you won't be quite so mad. Can I make a comment? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ray. No. Okay. Uh, on this immigration, uh, it's kind of tongue in cheek, and I hope he's listening so he can respond, but. Back in the early 70s, they let Earl Worthen immigrate into Albion. And you know what that's called? <laughs> this is just a little humor, there, please. All right. Well, I tell you what, you're all dear friends, and I'll accept that. But I'll tell you, on the other side of that coin, Ray, you know that we've got trouble, and we can't just push it under the rug. That's true. I understand, Zeb. I'm on your boat all the way. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care. I want to remind you about our big, big sponsor and advertiser, and that is, of course, uh, our major advertiser sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, with a great big spring 
tire sale. You can save a lot of money and drive safely on the best of tires for your car, pickup, and SUV, horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever. They've got the best. I urge you to stop into any one of the seven locations. And along with the tire sale, Big Spring Tire Sale, the best of brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. But again, I go back to this one word, service. They really care, and they come at a high lope to say, may we help you. I don't care where you go at any one of the seven locations, they really take care of you. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You know, I'm going to say this. Uh, a lot of people say, whoa, whoa, oh, gee, it sounds so serious. It is. And it calls for everybody to get involved and speak up and speak out. Or, yes, the worst will prevail. We're going to take a little break right now. I've got a call coming in on my cell phone that makes most sense to me because they know I'm on the air, but that's okay. And we'll be back at 9.06 with the Chamber Report with Leiden Crane and all kinds of goodies. Don't go away. Zeb at the Ranch on a Thursday. We'll be right back. Oh, good morning. You know, it uh, wasn't supposed to be, I think, as nice as it is out there. Deanne said it's very pleasant. And, yes, you did. You did say that. Just a minute ago, you walked into the studio and said how pleasant it is outside. (laughs) Thank you, Goober. Uh, Zeb at the Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the big, big spring tire sale. Stop in and see them today. And along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. I know some folks that absolutely have a great business, and they want to help you understand how you can enjoy your life more, maybe with a home theater system. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You know, roll back the chair, have the popcorn, home theater system, or maybe you're looking for car stereos and speakers, or maybe you're looking for a brand new TV like Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, whatever it might be. All of this and so much more at Patterson's at 421 East Main in Burley with Curtis and Lorena serving you Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. They've got all kinds of great things like 50% off right now on all the Monster Cables accessories. You can stop in and save money right now at Patterson's 421 East Main in Burley you stop in and see them today Deanne came in and mentioned to me that maybe 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 I said the wrong time uh, starting time for the Burley Livestock Sale Yard if I said 1030 I'm wrong I apologize it should have been 10 o'clock Merv told me yesterday, 10 o'clock, and I think I slipped up and said uh, starting time, first time at 10, and then second time in the uh, advertisement, I said 10.30. I'm sorry, it's 10 o'clock starting time. So here you thought you had 30 minutes to get there. (laughs) Ha, 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 you got 30 minutes less. It starts at 10 o'clock. Sale time today at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. I want to also remind you, too, about our dear friends over at Hanson Mortuary. And I'm sucking on a cough drop, so bear with me. (laughs) I can't get rid of that cough. It must be a spring thing. Hanson Mortuary with Joel Heward. What a nice, nice man. Along with his staff and his family, serving you at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. And the number to call, 436-5636. Don't forget, they really care and they provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity call that number 436-5636 and remember joel heward also serving you at morrison Payne funeral home on east main in burley Wow, it's time for the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce report. And with us today, da 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 da, Leiden Crane. Good morning, how are you? Good, Zeb, how are you doing? I'm trying to not let that cough drop get to the front of my teeth so I can't talk, but I'm okay. 
<laughs> That's good. I, I've been fighting a little one myself over here. I hope I don't. I, I don't have a cough drop in right now. I can't talk. I'm not as a, I'm not a professional like you. Oh, I've learned how to dribble that. I've learned how to bounce it to the back of my teeth. I've learned how to kind of whoop back to the front again. It's all kinds of neat things. But uh, what's going on with the Chamber of Commerce this morning? Well, we've got a couple of big events coming up that we're right in the middle of trying to plan for and get ready for. Um, kind of a quiet week this week with uh, spring break. I know a lot of families are heading south to get out of the cold, and um, we're just uh, continuing to plug away here with some of our upcoming events. So um, the, the biggest one on our calendar right now is definitely the uh, Minicaja Chamber of Commerce Women's Expo. Mm -hmm which is going to be coming up on April 24th. We've got about one month left. And uh, we're going to be having that down at the, uh, the Burley Best Western Inn uh, Convention Center uh, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And, I, I, you know, I was just talking to some friends and uh, clients this week. There's people getting excited for it. I know in the past it's been a big event and a um, great chance to kind of highlight the services and different things that are offered for women in our area. Well, now, just a minute. Uh, you know, here you are, a world-caliber accountant, and your poor wife is doing all the laundry and cooking the food. I think it would be great for you to go home tonight and say, Honey, I've got a babysitter for the whole day, and I'm going to send you to that Women's Expo. I, You know, that's a really good idea. I've been in the weeds here. I haven't even thought about that, but it's a good thing I got people like you to help me with that. Oh, yeah, and I suppose after the program's over this morning, you're going to call me and say, about your accounting records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometime we'll have to get to that. But, no, I, you know, it, it is good, and I, I do need to send my wife down there. She loves going to these fairs and different things, and... Um, I get a little scared when she takes the credit card with her, but I suppose that's what it's for. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do all we can to help get her there, Lighten. You can bet on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, you know, and this is a great opportunity as well for businesses. Um, our theme this year for the, for the expo is Hidden Gems, and we're looking for companies and uh, people who are running their own businesses here in our area to be willing to come down and showcase some of the uh, the hidden talents and um, services that they offer here in our area. Um, you can uh, call the chamber, and the phone number there is uh, 679-4793. And uh, to, to rent a space, if you're not a member of the chamber, we still have spots available. The, the cost is $125. And if you are a member of the chamber, then a, a booth space will be $75. And I uh, just been encouraging as many people as I can to, to get out and take advantage of that chance to show your business. Okay. And then also coming up on another event in Wheels, we've got a little bit of feedback on the line, if you would, please. The Minicasha Chamber of Commerce Golf Scramble. And I understand that you have already given your staff the entire day off because you're going to hit the links at 7 in the morning. Well, we're going to have to correct that. Nobody gets the day off. Oh, okay. <laughs> me. No, no, we, uh, you know, we're, we're actually going to be a sponsor there this year um, for one of the holes. Um, the, the great thing about the Chamber of Commerce Golf Scramble is, you again, you get to showcase your business. Um, there's, on each of the 18 holes, we always have a, a business sponsor, and they bring free gifts and food and uh, just get to say hello to the community there's we typically have about 36 teams and each team has four people on it so i'm you know that's over 120 to 150 people there and um it's uh it's another good chance to rub shoulders and meet people here in the community that have strong business ties and are dedicated to to keeping us economically strong and so uh, we, we will be sponsoring that this year. We still have a number of whole sponsors that are available. They go quickly, and they've been filling up this week. But uh, if, if you're interested in doing that, um, the cost is $500, and that will give you uh, your business on the whole. You can have some people there to shake hands and meet people. And um, you also get a four-person team to play in the scramble. Wow. Well, now, are you a pretty good golfer? No, I've I liked I was a baseball player. <laughs> so 
Well, you know, are you one of those toe golfers? And when I say toe golfers, you kind of stand there next to your ball when it's off the fairway and you kind of go when nobody's looking and use that toe to slide it back into the fairway? Uh, once in a while, yeah. I mean, it, it just seems so unfair. You hit that good of a shot and it two inches away, that, that's a gimme. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, what about uh, the leadership class? Yes. Um, I know last time I was on, I mentioned this. I want to bring it up again. Um, in August this year, we will be starting our 2019-2020 leadership class. I participated in that, oh, four years ago. And uh, it's it's a class they, for the, for eight months. You will go to the chamber one one day a, one day a month. And they will take you on a tour um, for about eight hours to visit businesses and other organizations in the, both the Minidoka and the Cajun County areas. Um, I, I met so many great people in, in my, my leadership class. Um, I still have friends that I work with on a daily basis, weekly basis, here in the, here in the area. And if, if you're new to the area, if you're just starting a business and want to learn about what you know what we have to offer here this is a great opportunity and uh, i just i can't express enough just how much that can do to to help you kind of put your face out there and and build some uh some good networking connections in the in our area well you know you were talking earlier uh on a program a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about the chamber of commerce or any chamber of commerce and a lot of people might say well what good does it do me or what value is it to the community how would you answer that question well to me the chamber is a tool it's like a shovel you can if you buy a shovel and don't go out in the garden and use it well, it's not. It's going to look really pretty, but it's not going to do you much good. And the chamber facilitates so many different activities and events. Um, and some people say, "Well, I don't do that much business here in the area, or all my customers are the same." And I, you know, what do I need that for? Um, and you, in in advertising, Zeb, I know you know the value of actually promoting what you do. Um, and I think that's important for all businesses, no matter what service or industry we're in. Um, we, it's, it's amazing how many connections I make at the Chamber, both here locally and with people that are outside of our community. And if I don't go to the events, then I don't learn those key pieces of information. I don't meet key people that really help my business go. Absolutely. So, yeah, for me... The, the chamber is a wonderful tool that I, just like a shovel, I have to pay a little bit of money. I, I get to use it, but with it I could... I can grow a garden and make my business flourish. So. Well, I use a shovel on this program, too, because people say I shovel something every day. So I guess uh, we're comparable. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know about shovels. Then. <laughs> Listen, if people want more information about any of these subjects that we've talked about this morning, please give us the info on how they can call or contact the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um our, our address for the Chamber of Commerce is 1177 7th Street in Hayburn. Um, we're open um, 9 to 5 each day, and uh, Lorena Grouse is the uh, contact down there, and you can get a hold of her on the events I've discussed and any other events that um, we have posted on our calendar, or if you would like to post an event, she can help you with that. And uh, our phone number is 208 679 4793. You are doing an excellent job, Lydon Crane, and now you can roll your sleeves up, sharpen your pencils, and tell everybody how much money they saved. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, take care, Lydon. All right, you as well, Zeb. All right, thank you. Uh, there is one of the sharpest, nicest young men uh, I think I've ever met, and uh, we're going to be talking about him later on this hour and his accounting firm. But, boy, he, he knows his stuff, and I really respect him. Lydon Crane, thank you very much. Ah, uh, let's see, what am I going to do now? i got to pay some bills before we go to the next segment of what we're doing here this morning. And uh, I want to talk to you about a story that just 
baffles me. I, I'm just absolutely, it stopped me in my tracks when I heard this, about a fifth grade girl dying in a fight inside her elementary school classroom. It's unbelievable. Stand by right now. I want to remind you about Let's Ride. Oh, my goodness sakes. They are located at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. And believe me, it's true. This is where the fun is sold. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6. Saturdays, 9 to 4. Just over there about uh, eight, nine days ago, had my four-wheeler service, Tyson out in the service department. These are really, really great people. They've got all the accessories, and they have all the four wheelers stop in take a look at what that showroom i again i do not understand how they got everything in there absolutely phenomenal at let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world yep this is where the fun is sold and again, over in that neck of the woods, I also want to remind you about our dear friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Hello, they know all about your employee benefits and retirement planning, uh, health insurance, life insurance, all of this and more for you, your family, and your business. And I urge you right now to write the number down. Give them a call at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424 dedicated, responsive help to you from Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. This story is developing as we speak. There was a fifth grade girl critically injured and died in a classroom fight in South Carolina. The young girl was airlifted from her elementary school on Monday and taken to the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, and she died. Ten years of age. The cause of death is pending an autopsy, and this particular young girl was evidently beaten to death or hit over the head or whatever the reasons in a classroom in a classroom and sheriff's deputies responded to a 911 call at the Forest Hills Elementary School and they they haven't put out the facts as to what happened who killed her or how? But in a classroom, and I, I'm sure that my audience that's listening to this is probably asking the same question that I did immediately when my wife gave me this information. Where was the teacher? Where were the leaders of the school? Where was the teacher in the classroom? This is a 10-year-old girl. I've got a 10-year-old grandson. Where was the leadership of the school? And for heaven's sakes, how did this ever happen? People need to be asking a lot of questions. And they said that there were two or three people involved in this fight... And another child involved in this fight, they are, they are saying it's an altercation, has been suspended from the school indefinitely. I, I'm just totally shocked at this, I guess as a father and a grandfather. How you can send your kids to school, elementary school especially, have them sitting in a classroom, supposedly learning, and then there's a fight and a child dies in the classroom. I just absolutely, did the teacher go down to the coffee room and, and have a little break with some other teachers and left these children totally unattended? Nobody in the classroom got up and yelled, screamed, and hollered for help? 
They just let this child be beaten to death inside the classroom? This is the face of America today. You know, I wonder, and I'm not saying this is what happened, but I'm wondering if possibly... Because of an, oh, don't touch my child attitude or I'll sue the school, I'll sue you. If maybe the teacher was so afraid to get involved that either he or she did nothing. I'm just trying to figure some loose ends out here. A child died. In school. Is that indicative of what our public schools are coming to? You send them to school, and you better teach them how to defend themselves because sitting in a chair, they're going to get beaten to death in a classroom with no supervision. This is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And if it's a bully situation to where maybe there were uh, individuals that were picking on this girl and bullying her, and when she tried to defend herself, uh, they just literally beat her to death. This This isn't the America that I grew up in. This isn't the Curtis Mill Elementary School in Jefferson, Wisconsin, that I attended. This is crazy. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I want to remind you about a sale that our dear friends are going to have, and that's, of course, the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Oh, do they do a good job. I, I get a kick out of old Joe. I've known Joe for almost 50 years. Joe Bennett, and the number to call, 539-0111. He'll give you the information. And the sale's coming up this Saturday, March 30th at 11 o'clock over in Filer at 4200 North, 2400 East. It's the Calvin and Fern Crawford Auction. Lunch by the Cook Shack, good food. And they're going to be selling collectibles and a lot of antiques. A lot of antiques. And uh, a whole uh, group of uh, very, very uh, collectible dolls. Very expensive. Along with uh, furniture and shop equipment like a Hawk 220 scroll saw, brand spanking new, miscellaneous items, all of this at the Calvin and Fern Crawford auction that's going to take place this Saturday at 11 o'clock over in Filer at 4200 North, 2400 East. Don't miss it. This sale managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, yep, they sell them all. Really good folks. I, I've got to get this in because I know they're listening for me to say this this morning. But don't forget, where's my note? It's over here underneath all the other papers. Bingo! Bingo! I've been almost threatened that if I don't say that every Thursday, bingo will take place tomorrow evening at uh, the Rupert Senior Center. Yeah, and I'll, they'll throw open the doors at 5.30, and then they'll have some early bird games. I don't understand exactly uh, why early bird games are different than other games, but they're going to have the early bird games start at 6.45 with all games starting at 7 p.m. I had no idea. A lady called me the other day. And she she is, I guess you could say, a professional bingo player. I mean, she makes all the rounds, goes everywhere, and she said, this is a big deal. I go Twin Falls, I go Burley, I go Rupert, I go all over. It's a big deal. Don't make fun of it. Well, I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying that bingo tomorrow night at the Rupert Senior Center, doors open at 530 Get out of the way. Here they come. Okay. Oh, my. Let's see what else have we got here. Um, We've had a change, and I was not notified until just about five minutes ago that uh, during the 10 o'clock hour, we are not going to have Cashew County School Days, and this infuriates me, uh, because our guest is not uh, 
evidently at the last moment available. And so I believe Deanne talked to our dear friend, former Representative Bert Stevenson, and he's going to come on and give us a update on the state water report. And I, God bless Bert. I mean, he's always been there as kind of my life preserver to come on the program and talk about various things, and I really appreciate it. Right now, um, I'm going to check with wheels over at our main studio and see if uh, we have the lovely Rita Ramsey on the line. Yes, sir. She just called in. Well, Wheels, thank you, my old friend. I appreciate that. And we say a good, good morning to a sharp lady, Rita Ramsey. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Rita, have you ever in all your life sat back as a news junkie, and I say that politely like I am, and seen or listened to or read about a week that was in so much turmoil? I'll tell you something. It's really kind of crazy, and I think what's trying to happen here is I think we've got a lot of news, supposedly, agencies that are trying to turn our attention away from the news over the weekend that uh, everybody was so wrong on, except those of us who were... um, common sense kind of people and um and so i think they're just spilling out one thing after the other that they can that they can show or do that will take attention away from that horrible thing that happened over the weekend let me ask you let's let's kind of break these down into story by story real quick uh let's start with the Mueller report okay the Mueller report is released automatically as if a green button was pushed Adam Schiff and Swalwell and Schumer and everybody else on the Democratic tickets. <laughs> okay, they released the report and they gave it to the Attorney General, William Barr. And automatically they're saying that he has gone in and uh, disrupted the process and perhaps disrupted the information. Automatically the Democrats are calling foul and I am sick to my stomach over the idiocy of the Democratic Party. Well, the thing that's really sad about it is that they are so livid that they can't see straight, and so they forget that it was given to the Attorney General because that's the law. And when you have that type of an investigation going, um, whoever the investigator is or whoever is in, in charge of it lawfully has to give it to the Attorney General. And a lot of that stuff, which is like um, grand jury testimonies, cannot be made public. That's right. They are not to be made public. That's the law. And here you've got all of these uh, legislators who supposedly know the law and say, no, you can't do it. I've got a quote here of Nan- from Nancy Pelosi. She said, we, d- we just haven't even seen the Mueller report, and we don't expect to accept just the Attorney General's interpretation of it. A little bit arrogant of him to think that that would be the case. We have to get the report. They, to their peril, will keep that report. In other words, she's saying, well, they're, they're not going to let us keep it, but we really need to see it. And, and she's saying, well, because they don't let us see it, we don't really know if it's his interpretation or whether it's really true or not. So we'll discount it, and it's just not true. You know, honestly, uh, I don't see it getting any better. I've talked to some people yesterday that are dear friends of mine that have been involved in politics on a national level for the last 15 years, and they're just shaking their heads. There is absolutely no reason, they said, for the Democrats, <clears throat> like Schiff and, and uh, Swalwell and others, to change their course. They hate Trump. They absolutely are crybaby losers. They want to see this country go into turmoil so that it's all anti-Trump. And they think by doing so, they're going to look good to the voting public, and they're going to take over and reign as kings forever. Well, that's what they would like to think, and I would put my opinion out there in that I think there's a lot more people in this country, many of them are Democrats, that will look at this and say, you know what? That's absolutely horrible what they've done, the amount of money that they've spent, the amount of money that they've, or the amount of time that they have spent trying to find absolutely nothing. And, and everybody knew that had a gut feeling at all that that could not, 
be true just because of the way that it happened. And after several months even, without going for almost two years, if you've got a brain in your head, you're thinking, you know what, if they would have found something, they were so livid, they would have had it right out there at the very beginning. They wouldn't have gone months and months and months more and spent more money trying to see if there was anything else because there was absolutely nothing to begin with, nothing in the end. And I think the American people are smarter than than the politicians give any of us credit for. Okay. Oh, that's the Mueller problem that's continuing. And just a side note, uh, this morning, <clears throat> at about 8 o'clock our time this morning, uh, back in D.C., they started the hearings to uh, point the finger at uh, Mr. Schiff. And uh, the accusation is such that they would like him to either step down from his committee chair and or even leave the Congress. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to see him out of politics. Before we take the call give me your thoughts on that quickly well you would think that uh, his uh, constituents would be so mad at him for the you know what he made of himself that they would say you're not going back to congress we are not going to have you and they just roll him right out of there and and put him on his nose i don't think that um i, I think that he needs to be called out on it like he was and asked to resign but as far as kicking him out, I mean, there's a lot of others who have done a lot worse things that didn't kick out. So I think their constituents need to roll him out. But isn't he from California? And there's yes. a bunch of odd people there anyway. So yeah. <laughs> odd people. Very well put. Caller, good morning. Quickly, you're on the air. Well, yeah, that's what I called about with Schiff and how angry he got because he was asked to resign. And, uh, but he doesn't deserve to keep his job. And you say to yourself, you know, in these situations where we have pockets, in the House of Representatives, where we have pockets, where we have Pelosi, Ocasio-Cortez, Schiff, whoever, it's, it's so frustrating because they have such a impact on our black, uh, political system that you say to yourself, you know, you don't know how you get you know, There's nothing you can do about it. It's just like Mr. Simpson and his lack of anything. He does nothing. He says nothing. It's just frustrating. I'll hang up. Uh, Randy, before you go, uh, give me a call after the program. I need to visit with you about something, if you would, please. Thank you. Rita, respond to the caller, please. No, I think he's absolutely right. Um, it's it's it just boils down to people actually getting in motion and doing something. And if if the constituents of the congressmen or or uh, senators or therefore even like representatives and senators in our own state, if we don't get get out there and get active, then we get what we got, and it wasn't due to anything that we did, but. It's, it's really sad, and, and I would say Mike Simpson's like top of the list in our area, is we haven't heard one word from him. Nope. I think he's trying to pretend like that, well, most of the people in Idaho are probably Trump supporters, and even though I'm not, I'm going to kind of lay low so that they don't use that against me in the next election. And as long as I just sit on my hands and don't say anything, then I will get reelected and can just stay in my comfy little congressman seat and everything will be fine. And meanwhile, we have no representation. You know, right there is where I'm so bitter against Mike Simpson. Uh, he used to call this program, as you well know, you listen, at least two times per month to inform us as to what's going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And since we had our little altercation over Muslims, Mike has just kind of bowed his neck and stuck his chest out and said, well, I'm not going to talk to him. That's not fair to you or anybody else in this area that voted for him or not. He is still our congressional representative for this area and I'm sick and tired of not being informed and all you hear from his office is crickets well that's right and you can write to him as I have done a number of times and I get a little form letter back saying on the, 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 the topic that you uh, wrote to me about this is where we stand and, and it's all just a little prepared statement and there's absolutely no you know, no care whatsoever that you even contacted them. i got to get into this next story because it's so weird. I've never in all my years heard, read, 
talked about this kind of a story where someone could be indicted on 16 felony charges and it's such a wacky story in the first place because it was all a set-up deal to give that particular person uh, notoriety and more publicity. It was all a fake and a hoax. And then after all the investigation, all the police work, all of a sudden, the main attorney general for the state of Illinois, they say to Jesse Smollett, whom we're talking about, oh, okay. All charges are dropped. Goodbye. Well, I think there's two things in play here. The first one, I think this is another one that's rolling out for us to turn our uh, attention over to Chicago, which we know is one of the most corrupt areas in the, well, in the United States, if not in the world. But the other thing is, is that you know darn good and well that there were some strings pulled to get him off. And isn't it amazing how when we saw him, he seemed so sorry. And, I mean, he all but said, oh, yes, I did it. The people who helped him supposedly said that they did it, and they were taking their, you know, head on the chin. But, you know, Jesse Smollett's mom is a Black Panther, and she has a lot of influence in, in uh, Chicago. And also she's one of uh, an associate of Angela Davis. They're very close friends. And they control a lot of the black, if you will, uh, comings and goings in the political arena in Chicago. And I think they were just thinking, you know what, um, we just don't want to have ha- have this happen to this poor kid. And, and um, I, if I was in the police department, I would be madder than heck over this. The, the other thing that's really sad about it is, if I'm not mistaken, I think that the police chief was a black man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've watched him many times on television. And along with even Rahm Emanuel, that I have absolutely nothing good to say about, the going-out mayor of Chicago, they called it an absolute debacle. There is no way that this is justice. And, and when those liberals are condemning this, you got trouble in River City, Rita. Well, you really do. And if you start looking at, uh, at, at the whole picture... You see that um, that um, uh, Miss Fox, who was the attorney general, I guess she was the attorney general. She um, she has ties to people like Soros and and other things like that. I'm not. I mean, I'm just wondering. And this is, I guess, the conspiracy in me, conspiracy in me coming out, thinking that Rahm Emanuel had to make a statement just because he had to make a statement, not that he was necessarily on board. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, I have to say, you know, this is kind of a, a bad deal that this happened because it really shouldn't have, and then just, you know, get off the soapbox and forget about it. I made my statement so they can't, uh, you know, they can't come after me for not saying anything or doing anything, but on the other side saying, hey, I just said, you know, it was kind of like, why, why did we let that go? But it's just kind of like all those other things that were race-related. You know, Michael Brown, he just was just minding his own business mm-hmm. and doing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And the police told him to put his hands up right. he did, and da 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 And just like any of the others that have had issues with the police, they were just standing there minding their business, being just a model citizen. Well, that's not the case. And it's just really sad to think that because of your color, not because of what you did, they're going to absolve you of any any uh, wrongdoing in this. I feel like that if they wanted to treat everybody that way, that would be fine, but they won't. You know, if I pulled a trick like that, I'd be sitting in jail, and they'd probably throw away the key for a long time. Well, that's the whole point. I had a call yesterday, and uh, I was criticized for even putting this story on my program, and I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How dare you criticize me for putting this story on the on the program because it's very important for all of us. Here's a kid, a punk that uh, is making 700,000 imagine this. $700,000 they said, uh according to one report I have, per episode of that TV show Empire. 
And he's arrested, and they find out that he's the one that wrote the checkout to these two weightlifters. He did this, this, and this. And now there's still federal charges pending whether or not he was the one that committed mail fraud by mailing those letters or those envelopes with the the cartoon on the drawing showing a black man being hung by a rope. I said, this is, this is something for all of us to think about, about how rich, wealthy people can twist and manipulate the system and get off scot-free. Well, it is, and it's all just a political thing because, um, and here's a, a quote, it's the most important reason Chicago Democrats are sounding off about a hate crime hoax, hoax is a topic that's almost taboo on the left. It's the runoff election for the next mayor of the city yep. in exactly seven days. Yep. And so that's what it's all about. It's just let, let, let's, let's not cause any kind of a thing that's going to cause any kind of an issue here we you know no matter what we want to do we'll just send the criminals out in the street and let them run and and you know it's collateral damage in the end rita i've got to do a weather forecast and when we come back guess what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about something i know you're really excited about and it's the new green deal i know you can't hardly wait we'll be right back uh, don't forget our weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. We talked to Leiden just a few minutes ago on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. What a great job he did. Right now, they are, of course, you know, providing accounting services to the Minicasha area as they have for over 50 years. They are the best at what they do. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Right now, we're going to have the weather. I'll tell you more in just a second. Rain showers for a couple of days, but hopefully by the weekend we'll see some sunshine. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting scattered rain showers off and on throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 52. Winds out of the west-southwest at about 14 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30 miles an hour. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Tomorrow, we do have another chance of some rain showers off and on throughout the day. Expecting some thunderstorms possible by the afternoon as well. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 51. Winds out of the west at about 17 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30 miles an hour for tomorrow night, 30% chance of showers, and expecting a low of around 33, so that could equate to some snow showers up in the higher elevations. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies, high of 53. Sunday, sunny and 58. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Uh, she does a great job on the weather. Thank you, Gina. And brought to you by people that really do the best at tax return preparation, tax planning, retirement planning, business consulting, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Absolutely the best with offices in Burley and Rupert. Rita, I, I just absolutely, I'm scared. Because I think it's already being implemented, and we saw signs of that implementation even here in our state of Idaho the other day in the newspaper that said, Idaho Power's goal, all clean energy by 2045. And I said to myself and my lovely bride, hey... Ocasio-Cortez doesn't have to pass the new Green Deal. Companies are already capitulating and buying into it. What are your thoughts? Well, as far as the Idaho power thing goes, I don't think that they're so interested in the green thing as they are saying, you can't use as much energy so we can sell it someplace else and make a lot more money. That's their thing. They don't really care. And that's why they've been on a campaign for a number of years to put... Um, little smart boxes in your outdoor unit of your air conditioner or your heat pump so that they've got control of it. They've got smart meters so that they've got control of those. And it's all basically saying, you will use the power that we want you to use. And if we feel like you're using too much, we're going to cut you down. We're going to have a brownout or whatever else. And we're going to send the power on down to California where we can get twice as much money for it. That's all that that's about, and that's what all of these companies are about. It's not about we're trying to save the world or 
or anything else. It's all about money, and it's really sad. Well, I think you're spot on. And next week I'm going to try to have a representative from Idaho Power come out on this program or via the phone and explain this. But here's the deal. Uh, The Green Deal is exactly what we read in the paper about Idaho Power. Oh, we want to make sure that we get away from fossil fuels and coal, and all we're going to have is hydro, solar, geothermal, wind, and biomass production sources. I'll tell you what, with the uh, hydro uh, energy and the environmentalists against our dams and our water usage, that could be diminished. And we could be stuck just relying upon, like, wind and solar, very unreliable, and watch your monthly bills go through the roof. Hold on, because you ain't seen nothing yet. They will, and that was that was the plan. That was, that, that's was that been the plan forever. Remember old cousin Al Gore and his uh, getting started with it, and he's teamed up with Soros, and it's basically to bring us down as a country so that we can't have the modern conveniences or the freedom or that we want to use that type of thing. If I want to use ten times more electricity than my next-door neighbor, if I'm willing to pay for it, I should be able to do that. And they, uh, these, these power companies, they're just uh, saying, hey, we want to be able to sell our power to somebody you know, that will give us more money because we're restricted where we're at. But the concept of having the new Green Deal go before the Senate, and it would cost. This is what blows my mind. Please help me understand this, Rita. We are 24 trillion dollars in debt i mean we're in the red as a country but it's okay for these nincompoops on the left like ocasio cortez camilla harris and others oh it's an investment we're going to charge the american public 94 trillion dollars to implement this program and it's an investment no it's not it's called compete bankruptcy and control well, you're absolutely right, and I thought that it was quite telling when they put the vote to work to the Senate and they didn't get they didn't get any votes for it. And it's because everybody knows it's destructive and dangerous. I thought that Mike Lee's take on it was quite good. He said, you know, the big problem about this uh, re- uh, showing it to the Senate and talking about it is for me to get through the Senate bill proposal without just laughing. Yeah, but, you know, there's some seriousness here, though, because the American public is naive and doesn't really do their homework at all. And Chuck Schumer came out yesterday and said, oh, we've got to get on the Green Deal bandwagon. So, in other words, this thing isn't dead, and there's going to be partial implementation, whether we like it or not, because I guess the Democrats have so much power now in this country, they're going to force Rita Ramsey and Zeb Bell and every everybody else to buy into this concept of watching our money float down the toilet and i'm going to fight them well we should and that's where you know and i always have stressed this and i'm sure everybody gets tired of hearing it but knowledge is power people have got to start paying attention making a a, a splash about it to their to their friends their neighbors their associates anybody that they know of and are around get people in the know of this so that they can go to the representatives and say, hey, we're not doing this kind of thing. You're, you're crazy if you think that we are. And uh, if, if enough people say we're not going to do it, then they won't. But, you know, you've got politicians, and I saw one of the websites this morning where Janet Napolitano was saying climate change is a threat. The southwest border is not a threat. Oh, Sounds my. Like- yeah. Oh, seriously? Yeah, it, it really, I'm almost out of time, but i got to have you give me an answer on this. I am, as a Caucasian, I'm very upset and, quite frankly, teed off at people like Joe Biden that are buying their election votes if they run for president by saying, Oh, I'm ashamed of being white for all the bad transgressions that have happened to others in this country. That makes me sick. I'm proud of who I am, and I'm not going to backwater for anybody. And these silly, frivolous, stupid politicians trying to make excuses, that bothers me. Well, and that's just what they are. They're excuses, and I think a lot of people are seeing through them. I um, I saw a thing where um, that, uh, you know, he, he talked like, or somebody talked like, it maybe not of him, 
they were going to have Ms. Abrams from from Georgia maybe yeah. invited to be his running mate, yeah. and they're going, <laughs> and they're saying he's crazy if they want us to save him. Why didn't he endorse us when we had the race in Georgia and everything else? So I think it's going to come back and kind of slap him in the face and. And instead of calling him Uncle Joe, I think we need to start calling him Grandpa Joe because he's getting pretty old, and, and I think that he's just going to have maybe a little bit of interest from other people, and then it'll fizzle out. I hope so. You know who scares me the most? Real again, i only got 30 seconds left. Robert O'Rourke. I'm not going to call him Beto because I think that's stupid. I'm going to call him Robbie Boy. What do you think of this guy? He's a nutcase. Well, he is, and he thinks that he can get on board like, oh, you know, I'm like one of the Kennedys. Well, the Kennedys didn't have a stellar record or anything good about him, and a lot of the stuff that he's done as a a representative and as a citizen are probably going to really hold him back. He doesn't hold a candle to some of these other people. I got to run, but boy, you really hit it hard this morning. Out of the park on this first day of Major League Baseball season. Rita Ramsey, thank you. Hey, thank you. All right, take care. It is Major League Baseball season opening day. As a matter of fact, I was listening to some commentators this morning at 4.30 this morning saying it's the earliest opening day games ever in history. I'm hungry. I'm starving to death, and I know some great places to go, like the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley. Oh, how about a fish sandwich with fries and a shake, like maybe a mint Oreo shake? Oh, good. And then the famous Farmer Brown Burgers. Oh, you're going to love the food at the AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Well, let's move on over to Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Great place to get together in the morning for your coffee and then also have a breakfast burrito scrambled eggs bacon and sausage cheese onions tomatoes and sauce on a tortilla shell (laughs) knock your boots off delicious great menu choices at taco bandito 2301 overland and burley well Two, two locations of Burgers Etc. 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. Mmm, I'm drooling. Hamburger combo only three ninety nine after 3 p.m. in the afternoon, along with a Huckleberry Shake. They are good. Don't forget to stop in and enjoy the great people and the great food served to you at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. And last but not least, Stevo's 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Food made the way you love it. The Buffalo Burgers and the Cheesy Broccoli Spuds. Oh, my goodness. And cupcakes, cupcakes, cupcakes. Different flavor every week. You're going to love it. Great people and super great great food at Stevo's in Hayburn and those are a lot of great places to go when you're hungry and starving to death we're going to get out of here for about seven minutes and then come back with my dear dear friend Bert Stevenson to give us an update on the Idaho water situation and we haven't talked to him for a while and we're going to see what's changed good bad or indifferent so that's coming up in just a few minutes along with our business salute and other guests don't go away Zeb at the ranch Okay, here we go into hour number three on a Thursday, March 28th already. Oh, my goodness sakes. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a great big spring tire sale. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Oh, my, before we have our guest on the air, and God bless him, I mean that, I'll tell you more in a moment, but I want to mention Dino Septic Service. Mm Mm-hmm. Doing the job that you and I don't want to do. I don't want to stand out there and pump a septic tank. (laughs) 
no. I don't want to be out there sewer and sink drain lines cleaned and all that. No, no, no. Liquid waste removal. I know some people that do, and they do it with a smile on their face. Dino's Septic Service. Absolutely. They've expanded their business. I mean, to better serve more people, and you call them today at 436-6526 or in Burley, 678-1638. As I said, fast, fair, friendly service. Dino Septic Service with that big truck that says smells cargo on the way. Dino's Septic Service. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do some changes. And uh, some people that couldn't be on the program this morning, Cassia County School Days, will not be brought in its entirety this morning. But we do have an outstanding uh, pinch hitter, and we're going to introduce him in just a minute. But I want to say thank you again to A Child's World for normally sponsoring Cassia County School Days. And, of course, they're located at uh, 1308 Overland in Burley. A Child's World with all the clothing and all the baby furniture the furniture in general, and of course, don't forget all the games, puzzles, and toys, and the Cherokee scrubs. Oh my goodness sakes, get in there today. A family store serving you a child's world. 1308 Overland in Burley. You know, so many times when I ran into a little uh, roadblock with not having certain guests that were available at a certain time, I have called this man and said simply, help! (laughs) And I mean it. Here he is, former representative for the state of Idaho, Bert Stevenson. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, I was just thinking, Zeb, if you and I were back in school, we'd be on spring break. We would be, but uh, back in those days, we probably would be out plowing the fields with a team of horses. I would have been, yes. So, <laughs> anyway, Zach, glad to be able to visit with you. You know, Bert, I really appreciate your taking the time. Uh, I, I want to get into something a little political after we talk about the water situation. And you, as a former representative, you can really uh, give us some insight on this. But first and foremost, since we talked last, we have had another slap in the face with winter, and it hit us pretty good. What's the water situation and the snowpack levels? What do they look like going into this irrigation season? Well, Zeb, we're going to be in good shape uh, as far as the uh, Snake River above Milner. We're going to be in great shape here. Uh, We're 84% full this morning. Uh, They're releasing about uh, 8,000 CFS past Milner to uh, fill the or to uh, make room for the snow melt, and uh, that water will all go down. The uh, Treasure Valley is. Uh, looks like they're going to be all right, and they're releasing a little bit of water, but uh, they're only about uh, 54, 55% uh, full. That's the uh, Anderson Ranch, Arrow Rock, and uh, Lucky Peak. But <clears throat> there's a lot of snow out there. Now, the Wood River Valley, they're releasing water from Magic now, uh, to, anticipating making some room for that when that snow starts to melt. One of the things we really worry about this time of year, Zeb, is if we happen to get a a change in the weather that turned 70 or 75 degrees and and then started to rain, that snow comes off so fast. We'd rather it come off in July, some of it, to uh, keep our reservoirs topped off. Bert, let me ask you. That's kind of where we're at now in this. uh, The uh, pad. Uh, drainage is uh, full and uh, and then lots of snow up there the wood river's uh, a lot of snow there and so bird is there i gotta ask you this uh a couple of years ago devastating floods in this area with like you said temperatures that all of a sudden just warmed up with a huge snowpack and we had flooding and uh, property damage and everything were there or have there been any perhaps precautions that have been taken to alleviate the danger of that flooding for maybe this year uh, Zeb, the uh, uh, and the only one I'm familiar with is the Wood River Valley. 
uh, a year ago, the legislature gave us a uh, million dollars uh, for flood control, and uh, and we give that that uh, the water board gave that out to uh, uh, people who had damaged or had facilities damaged. Uh, the Wood River, they're uh, trying to get theirs. Uh, they're the ones that's probably at the greatest risk right now of uh, flooding. Mm-hmm. And some of it is is just the way they built their houses right right on the river. There's uh, I don't know how you build up so that that's alleviated. Yeah, uh, we all want it. We always want a house right on the river until it floods, and then we oh we didn't want it here. It's your job to fix it. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Bert, had we not had the weather pattern that came in for the last, let's say, 45 days, would things as far as irrigation and the availability of water, would that have really been in a danger zone? Uh, We'd have been reasonably well off on the snake uh, because we were going into the... the, uh, with about uh, 45 percent full and and uh, as of the first of february it looked kind of bleak but we would have got through the irrigation season but it would have been really tight uh places like uh, salmon falls down there they'd have been really in a world of hurt now it looks like they're going to have more water than they've had for years but bert here we are living in a desert in southern Idaho and totally reliant on the good Lord above supplying the snow and the moisture for our reservoirs. And to use kind of a blunt terminology, it's kind of a crapshoot every year, isn't it? Well, that is one of those things that we have to we have to manage it. I shouldn't say we. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to do with it. I'm just on the board, but. Uh, we have to manage it and, and try and uh, we're, we're doing quite a lot with recharge right now uh, on the Miller Gooding Canal. Uh, we're recharging uh, on milepost 31 and out on uh, west of uh, and north of Shoshone. And uh, that is all going to help uh, make water available for those who pump their water and, and that we're happy for the privilege. And, and Zeb, I have to tell you, we can't thank the legislature enough uh, several years back for deciding that we had to have some money to to resolve some of these water problems. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it, uh, that, that just, we went a lot of years just draining the bathtub and then never put anything back in. Well, you know, I want you to stop right there, Bert, because after you were on the air, caller, stand by just for a minute. After you were on the air the last time, a caller called, and and this caller was new to our area, had moved here from back east. And when we used the terminology recharge, they didn't understand what that meant. Could you, in a very short synopsis, give us a statement of what recharge is, and then we'll take this call? Uh, Zeb recharge is where we take water from the river and run it through the canals and put it in places where it will go into the aquifer. Uh, and we have places up uh, in the Idaho uh, Falls uh, area that we're doing it. Uh, up St. Anthony, we've got a pretty good project going up there. And, uh, and that's where we take the river water and put it into the uh, aquifer to rebuild that or to at least stabilize it. We're not so sure how much we can rebuild it, but we, if we can keep it from falling down, then we've uh, made a, uh, a really good deal. Uh, the legislature uh, or the uh, agreement with the uh, Surface Water Coalition is that we'll put in, uh, the state will put in 150,000 acre feet of water annually. Okay. Uh, some years we'll make it. Uh, we've been, the last three years we've done better than that. Bert, we have a caller with a question, and caller, you're on the air. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, Bert, every year we have to augment the flow down the state to the Columbia. And uh, I was wondering, you know, there's always a date set for the 250,000 acre feet that we have to waste i feel is uh, you know is that still set in stone or do we get credit for what is running down there right now 
Well, uh, most of the stuff that's going down now, we'll uh, it'll be put in. Uh, we, we don't get credit for that now. The uh, fishing game uh, determines, and I think it's around the middle or last of April that the uh, uh, salmon flush, the, the flow augmentation that we have to put in for that, and that will run through till about June. Now, if we're running water on past, then uh, we get credit for some of that, not all of it. Well, it's it's a terrible shame that we can't get credit for it when it's done. And, uh, you know, of course, in this year the reservoirs will be full. But, uh, you know, what we've done with recharge is, again, I've said it so many times, but the state of Idaho is so far ahead of anywhere else in the western states when it comes to uh, water cooperation with each other and recharge and having it, being in charge of our water it's i don't think people realize just what we've accomplished i'll hang up thanks uh respond to the caller one last time bert please uh i appreciate what he said and i can tell you that uh we would, uh, the lawyers would have gotten rich. In fact, they're a little concerned now that maybe their uh, cash cow is uh, drying up. But uh, and I hope it totally dries up. But that's just me. But uh, because of the cooperation with people and that, and and the state, uh, when you uh, we have people come up from California quite often and say, "Why can't we do this in California? Why can't we recharge there?" Well, uh, I don't know their topography and that, but, but I can tell you we're doing a, a bang-up job here. And, and we have to give credit, a lot of that credit, to the uh, working of the people together and the legislature supporting it. Absolutely. Bert, uh, again, here just recently, before Christmas and then after Christmas and the holiday season, I talked to a lot of people all around the United States, and it seems like there's that voice again uh, crying from the wilderness of, hey, Idaho's got water, let's try and get it. Are there any new sources or worry points that you are concerned about, about somebody else trying to develop our water. Uh, Zeb, I'm a little concerned that uh, we have Oregon and Washington that uh, uh, most of this water comes out of the Columbia, but we the snake feeds into the Columbia, but but they're developing some new ground and that, and we've been somewhat hesitant to to be supportive of uh, until we get this aquifer problem solved at least uh, new water as far as uh, uh, groundwater uh, water. We've been really reluctant to encourage that in the state of Idaho. But, uh, you know, these people that I'm talking about, whether it's uh, Las Vegas, California, Oregon, and Washington, what kind of protection do our users, our farmers, our ranchers, our water users in the state, what kind of protection do we have that we're not going to be overrun? Well... Zeb, uh, I'd, be a, I'd be a fool, and maybe most people think I am a fool, but I'd be a fool to say it would never happen. But we have a, probably as strong a legislation in the state of Idaho that people, before any water can leave the state of Idaho for other uses, has to have the approval of the uh, uh, state legislature and the Department of Water Resources. And so when when Las Vegas is up here in northern Nevada uh, trying to figure out a way to tap the the river here, uh, they're not going to make it because we're not going to let them have it. Bert, one final thought, and I've only got two minutes left in this segment, but I want to ask you something uh, for our put your politician cap on for a moment. We have seen the last two years be so devastating against our United States of America trying to get anything done with this Trump administration and the Democrats absolutely dragging their boot heels and calling him a traitor and everything else negative for two years to get nothing accomplished. As a former legislator, can we please look ahead for the next two years and see some optimism? Or do you think this is going to turn into another great big long two years before 2020 of the Democrats doing nothing but hate? Uh, Zeb, as you listen to the news this morning, uh, 
I hate to tell you this, but I don't see much hope there because uh, they're uh, mustering their forces to try and uh, do everything. We've already started for the last six months the uh, uh, 2020 campaign. That's the longest thing that, and I get so sick and tired of that. And why, why do we, and it all centers around we hate Trump. I'll tell you, we, we all knew that things were bad back there, but he had the courage to call it a swamp and, and get things right. We ought to be grateful to that man for what he's accomplished. I couldn't agree more, and I'm very, very concerned about uh, America the way I was brought into it as compared to what it is today. I look over my shoulder, and I really uh, I, I crave the way things were or the way things ought to be, like I say at the end of my program, and I think you'll agree. Well, uh, yeah, it'd sure be nice to have it back there the way it was. Now, there's some things I like better than modern tractors are really lots nicer than that team of horses. Well, I think it's the moral values and the distinguishment of right and wrong that we've lost, and I certainly hope we can get it back. And, and Zeb, let me tell you, the one thing that we've lost is our appreciation for our Heavenly Father and God-given rights and blessings. How often do we thank our Heavenly Father for those blessings that we get? This water and snow comes. I can tell you I didn't have anything to do with it, and there isn't a guy around that had anything to do with it. Our Heavenly Father arranged that. Amen. You know, it's so refreshing to talk to my dear friend. Please say hello to your lovely wife. Wish her the best. And God bless you, Bert Stevenson, former representative. I just I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on the air. Well, Zeb, I appreciate the opportunity, uh, and uh, I hope we always have some things that we can talk about. I do, too. Thank you for your friendship, Zeb. No, so much I appreciate you. Thank you, Bert. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, right now... Right now we're going to go to the other phone line, and I thank Bert Stevenson so much for being on our program this morning. And I've got another gentleman waiting in the wings right now that's going to come on our program. And uh, I really got to know him a lot better in the last year or so because of our involvement with my grandkids, his boy, and and all playing basketball and football and everything. Let's say good morning to Jeff over at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Jeff, are you there? Well, Zeb, I am here. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, that's a tough act to follow between you and uh, Bert there. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, very interesting. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, everybody wants to hear what's going on in the community and what's going on in the state. And I know that right now over at least Furniture Floors and More, going into the spring, maybe people have got this attitude of spring cleaning and we're going to refurbish things. Hey, Albert, we're going to put a brand new floor in the kitchen. Tell us about it. Yeah, you know, you're very intuitive because that is true. In fact, um, uh, this time of year really is, uh, is, is a prime opportunity uh, now that winter has passed. You know, people kind of get tired of the, the stuffiness of the house. Uh, maybe the floor covering starting to look a little ratted or a little bit worn or a little bit soiled. Anyway, Zeb, that said, uh, we have uh, right now a number of new shipments that have just arrived in our floor covering, which involves carpet rolls. Also remnants, and for people who don't know what a remnant is, that's a, that's a small roll of carpet that we sell at significant discounts if you want to do like a living room or a bedroom or a small area where you can save a tremendous amount of money. And also, uh, we carry a lot of the luxury vinyl plank and tile. Not only can we order it, but we carry it in stock. And that's the new hard surface that looks like wood that is waterproof. It's easy to install yourself. It's easy to replace if something gets damaged. Very popular. We have it all. We carry all of that in stock. Let me ask you a question. A lady called me after you were on the air one time, and I forgot to mention this, but she was talking about the luxury vinyl planks and, and about how you put it in and and uh, can people do it themselves and is the surface, uh, does it come in different surface textures, uh, maybe for seniors to walk on it a little bit more carefully? I don't know. So I thought I'd ask you. Well, in a nutshell, then, this is how it works. There's multiple styles. Some can be direct glued down to the floor. 
Some people have that neater preference, and that oftentimes is in a commercial situation. We have others that have a locking system that you can just assemble and put down on the floor yourself. Some have a pad. Some do not have a pad. But the pad runs a bit more, but it's nice because it offers a little bit of cushion, and it's a little bit quieter. But these floors are designed so that you can install themselves, or you can have a professional installer put it in. We have many uh, installers here available, and so you can have that choice. Uh, many people even attempt to install it themselves and say, no, we want an installer. We can help either, either scenario. So anyway, that's kind of how that works. Absolutely. So basically, spring cleaning could be also spring beautification and comfortization in your home. Uh, go in there, and you probably find a recliner or a sofa and love seat, or like you said, the carpet or the flooring, or anything at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Yeah, we just uh, did spring cleaning on our warehouse. We've basically emptied it out. We have uh, 50 to 70% off on all of our mattresses. We still have some left, so you can get some great savings. We've had new shipments in our reclining furniture and recliners. So, yeah, it's really a great time to come in. And for those customers that are interested, uh, Zeb, you can go up to 48 months interest-free, or you can come in. We've got great uh, cash discounts going, so come on in. What are the hours over there, Jeff? We're open 9 to 6. Uh, each day, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, 10 to 5 p.m. Wow. If they can't make it in there, they just aren't trying. It's always there and available to open the door and meet some nice people at Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley. By the way, may I say I hope your son has an excellent track season, and I wish him the best. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll try to see if I can keep up with him and see how he does. All right. Hey, <laughs> come back on soon. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Zeb. All right. Bye-bye. Jeff over at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland in Burley. Oh, I got one note here I want to remind everybody. I had a couple of people call the legends of professional team roping, and that's Jake Barnes and Clay O'Brien Cooper are going to have a big team roping school up in Meridian on June 1st and 2nd at Dave Stucker's Arena. Don't miss this. Call for reservations and learn from the best that have absolutely, uh, the, they're legends in the team roping industry. Jake Barnes and Clay O'Brien Cooper call Dave Stucker at 866-3444. That number again, 866-3444. Right now, we'll send it back over to Wheels and be back with our next guest in just a few moments. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, we thank you, and boy, it's been a great week, and we've had some outstanding guests on our program every segment during the course of this week, and we're not done yet, because I'll guarantee you, this lady is one of my favorites to get on on the air and talk about everything political or what's going on. Karen Cataline, how are you? Oh, always good to talk to you, Jeb. You know, it, it's so challenging that you call me in a day when there's just nothing happening, you know? Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> there's no news. Nothing's happening. Nothing to talk about. Yeah, and Alice in Wonderland owns a taxi service. Yeah, all of that. I believe it. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Let's let's talk about the story that you wrote called False Accusers in the Mueller Investigation or Jesse Smollett Times a Thousand. I want to kind of break this down a little bit and bear with me and let me let me interject questions on a, on occasion if you would. Number one, oh, yeah. this case with Jesse Smollett. I want to I want to have you talk about this because this is lies. This is cheating the public. It's fraud by taking the public money and wasting it on an investigation, and all of this seems to co-mingle with the democratic mantra that's going on in our country today. You can say or do anything, and you're going to walk away, and nobody's going to bother you. That's for sure. What, what I have to say about this is that I wrote this piece Sunday night, okay? I wrote it, as, and, and all I did was mention Jesse Smollett as an example of of false accusations, that this is uh, a, a signature move of the left. You don't see, no matter how much you may like or dislike, and sometimes I do, Republicans, establishment Republicans, this is just not one of the tactics we do. 
Jesse Smollett was becoming a poster child for false accusations. He knew darn well because he was he was taught how to you know get a pass as long as you accuse the right people. If you accuse white people and Trump supporters, people are going to come around to protect you. Well, that was Sunday night in response to the Mueller report, finally, thank God, in which uh, basically it was clear that the Mueller report and all of the accusations we've been watching for two years was a giant, huge, false accusation hoax not unlike Jesse Smollett, to go after Trump himself, to reverse an election. We know the story. The left doesn't know the story because nobody reports it over there. Um, and then what happens is Jesse Smollett, all of his felony accusations, they drop the charges and seal the records. It couldn't have been the timing more perfect, and I don't think there's any accident in politics. As long as you as long as you've been writing and Karen, as long as you've been writing and studying politics, and I, I want you to really kind of think back in your history of doing this, have you ever seen a case uh, where someone has been accused and indicted with sixteen felonies? And then all of a sudden, in the dark of night or early morning, you get up, you turn on the TV or the radio or the newspaper, and you see that person is walking with absolutely no incrimination whatsoever. How did this happen? Uh, well, the rumor is, and I haven't investigated it, so I can't say for sure. The rumor is that a call was made by an assistant of Michelle Obama Gee, I'm shocked about that, aren't you? Oh, I'm, I'm knocked on the floor, yeah. This happened, <laughs> this happened in Chicago. Um, what I think is over-the-top hilarious, if it weren't so sad, is that on its very face we know what happened, and yet he's maintaining his innocence. And we are being expected to believe this, this hoax within a hoax. And if we don't, mark my words, if we don't believe him... Guess who's going to be called a racist? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Karen, let's tie this together a little bit, and I'm sure you and I are on the same page. Uh, I enjoy having you on here because we can communicate what really is going on. We're talking about, uh, let's talk a little bit about tying this together with the accusations of politicians against Donald Trump. Let's talk about John Brennan, CIA head formerly, calling Donald Trump a traitor and going on and on about it. Let's talk about Adam Schiff saying that Trump is a traitor and that he, Schiff, had all the information and evidence to prove that Trump colluded with Russia. You can keep going down this list. Where is it legally that these people have to become responsible for their statements, much the same as Jesse Smollett in creating a racist crime that didn't happen? happen it's the same thing and and i think jesse smollett is a product he was he basically is the offspring of the politicians and the bureaucrats and the uh lying propagandist in the media who who actually uh reward false accusers as long as they're accusing the right people so now these people have been exposed, and they are going to expect that other people are going to give them a pass. There's only one thing that they didn't ever imagine. They never expected who Donald Trump really is. He does not back down when he knows he's right. I, I was cheering in my car when I heard he is going to... Uh, declassify exactly what happened in the uh, in the FISA warrants because he has to. He must. There must be accountability. Uh, American citizens have been crying for it, praying for it, screaming for accountability. And there must be in order to right these wrongs. And I think Donald Trump is about the only Republican who has the backbone and the fortitude to do it. I agree. Let me ask you, though, I don't think the Democrats are going to wise up. 
I don't think the Democrats are going to grow up. I don't think this country is going to benefit from two years wasted of uh, our politicians not serving the public. And I look at the next two years before 2020 of the same old, same old with people like Adam Schiff and Swalwell and others that are nothing more than overgrown diaper wearing politicians that absolutely should not be in office. What are your thoughts? Oh, well, I couldn't disagree. I couldn't agree more with you. I think you're absolutely right. But I would add one thing. As awful as this is, and you may know that I'm in northern Colorado where we're seeing an enormous amount of awfulness because there aren't enough votes to stop the uh, leftist nirvana that they think they're going to create here in Colorado. Um the fact of the matter is this kind of poison has been going on for much longer than we'd like to admit. And I am heartened and encouraged, believe it or not, that it's coming out in the open because it was infinitely more dangerous when it was hidden. We knew that what we had a hunch us political watchers knew, what the previous president was capable of and what he was up to, and we were pretty scared about what could happen with an unchecked individual like that. And now, because of not only Donald Trump, but the American people stood up and said, enough, and this is why they are fighting him so hard in Washington, what we're seeing is shining light on this poison. And that's the only way you lance a boil, is to open it up, look at it, and clean it out. Now, I... I have no illusions it's all going to get cleaned out, but you have a much better chance on it when you put some light on it. So it's painful, it hurts a lot, but then we can maybe clean clean a few things up. Okay. So I'm encouraged, believe it or not. Okay, Karen, but with the cleaning up, I'm so glad you said what you said because it opened the door for me to say this. We can talk about Donald Trump. We can talk about Adam Schiff, and we can talk about collusion. We can talk about John Brennan calling him a traitor. We can talk about the Obama administration. But there's one person, one person that is getting out of this and skating around the frozen pond and not having to worry about any thin ice so far, and that's Hillary Clinton. Why aren't there investigations started against her? Yeah, well, I don't think when the declassification happens, she's necessarily going to skate. I think Obama is more Teflon than Hillary, but I think they were in cahoots together. And I don't think they even like each other, but I think they were in cahoots. So I think that a lot of fascinating things are going to be happening. Why do you need to read a Tom Clancy novel when you can watch this stuff? Oh, my. This is unbelievable, historic unprecedented stuff in American history, and we're right here watching it. So I think there are a lot more surprises yet to come. We don't know what's in that classified information on the FISA warrants, and I think our hair is going to stand on end. Because it already has. Well, you know, uh, that leads me to another question, but we have a caller on the air, and I'll take the call first and then ask you another question. Caller, you're on the phone. Go ahead, please. Well, I think that if they had Hillary Clinton dead to rights and, and there's enough evidence that they don't want to investigate it, the reason why they're fighting so hard is because this is all going to end up right in Barack Obama, his office, I don't know, Valerie Jarrett. I, I tell you what, it, it may be the most corrupt administration in history. They They were so corrupt, everybody that was in that, administration you, you just signs of corruption and it, it's scary so hillary wouldn't go down for the cause she'll take obama with her and another thing quickly ma'am is you live in colorado would you in your spare time here today if you have any could you explain <laughs> how marijuana is destroying your state thank you you know, it's interesting, that caller uh, asked that question. That's the next one on my checklist, uh, but I don't want to go into that right yet. I want you to uh, talk a little bit about this absolutely cancerous swamp of politics that's going on. And add to the swamp, Karen, in your answer, how are we going to get the media cleaned up? Oh, 
Well, it couldn't happen without a corrupt media. It couldn't have happened. And a lot of the Julian Assange stuff made it clear how it happened. Because they go play golf together and they pay off, you know, they pay each other off and they give each other tips. And it's like the media was taking dictation instead of investigating as long as it made uh, one party look good and the other party look bad. Uh, I, I uh, wholly agree with the caller, and I would add that we can never lose sight of why. I like to look at motives, and the motives that I think were operating here in the corrupt administration that he mentioned is not only personal self-aggrandizement, and in Hillary's case, money, 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 but there's an ideological poison, which is the ide ideology of socialism. You know, these hard-left socialists, that's why I'm so glad that they're admitting it now, some of the, some of the children of these uh, uh, socialists, um, they cannot, they could not sell socialism outright. They've never ever done that. The closest Obama ever came was, you didn't build that. The state built that. You're nothing. The state is everything. But everybody was watching knew what he meant, but a lot of people who don't watch didn't understand. Um, they have to lie, cheat, and steal, steal elections, lie and cheat, because America, just like Trump said, is not a socialist country. America, as we know, don't get me started, I already am, was born on the principles that fight that kind of tyranny, that, that are against all that tyranny and, and elevate the rights of the individual, even if that individual is in the minority or a minority of one. So that's what they've been up to. They're actually trying to destroy this country and the system on which it was based. And a lot of people are too afraid to say that, but it's the truth. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so we've got to, to know that corruption, it wasn't just corruption for the sake of corruption, although Hillary is one of the greediest and nastiest people, and most Americans, even a lot of Democrats, know it now. But look how long it took us to get to know who she really was. And, uh, you know, I think she'd sell her own grandmother for uh, personal wealth and uh, to keep up her lifestyle and image. But Obama is a, is a pure ideologue, and I don't think he loves this country. I don't think he even likes this country. Uh, and it took a while, uh, you know, to see what that was going on, and we never would have, as you know. Karen, if real quick. Had, God forbid, been elected, we wouldn't be seeing any of this right now. Absolutely. And that's what they were trying to cover up. Absolutely. Circular logic on their part. Karen, I've only got... answers the question uh, as fully as I could. I, I've only got about three minutes left, and, and i got to scoot through these really quick. And I want to mention, when you have networks uh, that are absolutely controlling the minds of people, like CNN, MSNBC, ABC, etc., you know, we've got some real problems with getting the word out that is not unbiased. Journalism today is dead. There is not a right and a wrong, and there is not a black and white. And it's mostly opinionated journalism that leans to the left. We've got a real problem. We do, and they couldn't have accomplished this lie and this hoax without a willing media. And I don't think it's, uh, I think it's pure propaganda. You have to realize that's what Pravda was all about right here. We're watching it. Absolutely. Listen, uh, the gentleman brought up a, a, some subject that I was interested in, too, because there seems to be more of a push every day for the legalization of marijuana. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. Everything's cool. What are your thoughts living in Colorado as to what you've seen and what it has done to your state? Well, I hate to say, and I, I'm going to try to say this quickly because I have a lot of thoughts about it, uh, initially, I've always thought, libert uh, you know, I kind of have a, a libertarian view that it wasn't the job of the government to regulate this stuff and make it illegal. But, but marijuana was merely just the opening salvo and also funded by the Soros machine. Uh, Colorado has gone so much past marijuana legalization, which, by the way, has many bad outcomes, including... 
uh, enriching and empowering the government because now the government is the biggest drug pusher. But, you know, we've gone way past that because they took over this state. And now they're pushing, if you heard Tucker Carlson, they wanted to push safe injection sites. Yes. In Colorado, and there was such an outcry that the very leftist uh, uh, legislature and governor backed off until next year. But they will come back with this again. And it destroys cities. Look at Vancouver. Um, every ugly, nasty socialist thing you can think of is being pushed in Colorado right now. If you want to see what the Democrats are up to pushing in every state, in this country where they can get it through, watch what they're pushing in Colorado. Sex education for five-year-olds and LGBT stuff, uh, you know, shutting down oil and gas exploration, taking away our vote and pushing the, the um, national popular vote. They don't care what they do. They do it by force. It's very serious and very, very much a concern. And Karen Cataline, you are always welcome on this program. I thank God that I had the chance to get to know you and have you on this show. Please come back soon. You're a doll, and if anybody would like to connect with me, just go to KarenCataline.com, Cataline with a K. I would love to connect with people, Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. Uh, Karen, God bless you. Come back soon. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'll be in touch. My pleasure, Zeb. Thanks for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Wonderful lady and really knows what's going on. Karen Catalina and I appreciate it. I am running late and the weather forecast. Wheels going, hey, Zeb, look at the clock. Uh, weather forecast brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. And believe me, absolutely delicious meats. Marinated pork ribs, the tri-tips. Oh, and it's and we're coming up on my favorite season of the year, barbecue season outside. Side. Woo, baby, they've got it all. All the bacons and the breakfast sausages, all of this and more from Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. Tell you more right after Gina gives us the weather. Rain showers for a couple of days, but hopefully by the weekend we'll see some sunshine. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting scattered rain showers off and on throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 52. Winds out of the west-southwest at about 14 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30 miles an hour. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low of 33. Tomorrow, we do have another chance of some rain showers off and on throughout the day, expecting some thunderstorms possible by the afternoon as well. Mostly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 51. Winds out of the west at about 17 miles an hour, as high as 30 miles an hour for tomorrow night. 30% chance of showers and expecting a low of around 33. So that could equate to some snow showers up in the higher elevations. By Saturday, mostly sunny skies, high of 53. Sunday, sunny and 58. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Gina. And the weather brought to you by Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats. Mm -mm, I told you I got to invite Don over to come on the program and then say, oh, by the way, while you're coming over, bring some brats. I love their brats. Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Scarrow's Meats. Oh, my goodness, we've had a wonderful week, and I want to say thank you to my audience. Uh, outstanding calls, outstanding questions and comments, and we really appreciate it. And a big shout-out to our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale. Now get in there today. You can save a lot of money on your tires for your car, pickup, SUV, horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever. They've got all the tread designs, all the sizes, and the know-how for you. These are really knowledgeable people, so please stop in. And the best in brake service, highly trained brake technicians, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this and more with the best of service. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers with a great big spring tire sale. 
Wow. Uh, We covered a lot of ground this week and had a lot of subject matter, and we're going to have a great week next week as we start a brand new month of April. We're going to have Richard Manning on the air. We're going to be talking uh, to Sally Pipes and our legislative update next Monday morning. Uh, We're going to have, I think it'll be the last one. Hopefully they're going to get the session finished in the next couple of days. All of that coming up at the beginning of a new month next Monday. Zab at the Ranch, and don't forget to tune in, KBAR 1230, streaming live all over the internet, zebbell.com. Uh, don't forget if you want to get my blog weekly, Cowboys, or pardon me, Cow Pies and Coffee Cups, and uh, just go to my blog, zebbell.com, and uh, click it in, we'll get it to you. And we'll be back next Monday at 8.06, where we always say the way things were are the way things ought to be, and the world needs more cowboys. Boys. Have a great week. God bless. See you Monday.